Real is not real. <laughs> what if I speak a little bit loud? Does that help me? Okay, good. <laughs> How is it now? We will be far away from yeah. you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You guys can come this way. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Well, thank you again, Pallavi, for inviting me uh, to the show. What a starry lineup. I'm honored to be here. This work that's on these walls is recent. I am a second year MFA student at the California College of the Arts. And uh, my work, it's a nice segue from Boisley's work, is also about memory, but also place. So this particular body of work is from memory of a house that I was born in, in northern India, uh, and also the house that my grandparents found refuge in when the India-Pakistan partition happened in 1947. So how did I come to this? Um, this came into my consciousness um, in the last year when my family, my family is diasporic, like a lot of our families, they're in different continents, so when COVID happened, there was a WhatsApp group. That was formed to especially keep the elders of the family in touch with everybody else. And as things go, you know, there were weddings and birthdays and deaths, and a couple of grainy sepia photographs were shared. And those kind of jolted my consciousness. They were photographs of a courtyard, and this is the courtyard of the house that I was born in. So that's how this particular body of work started. So once those photographs were shared and we started talking about them, we started talking about the bit of the family, about a discussion of how we remembered uh, where, where locations in the house were. So for example, I thought that when we entered the house, the kitchen was to the right. And then I told my dad, and he said, no, the kitchen was to the left. And he was adamant, he was like, no, it was never to the left. And my mother also said, no, it was to the right. Well, it turns out we were both right. Uh, there had been a little remodel at some point in time, and they had moved. So I became interested in how memory functions. What are the lapses in memory? Where is the memory sharpest? And how does, what happens to long-term memory? So this whole body of work is trying to capture those uh, lapses, the sharpness, uh, and the, the construction, sometimes we construct things, like, and mostly on my part, most of the construction on my part. Um, yeah, so um, I won't talk about every individual piece, but I do want to talk a little bit about materiality. That's uh, very important to me. So as you can see, the pieces are in raw canvas uh, and muslin. So raw canvas, as you know, its relationship to Western art and painting is the primary material before you just sew it and start painting it. And muslin is also a prototype of material, but in the world of fashion. So I was a fashion designer in a previous life, and I enjoy that idea of experimentation, of uh, possibility of modeling something before it becomes something else. Um, so that is why I've been, I've been staying very close to these materials. The one time I did digress a little bit was in after Zarina. Uh, so as I mentioned, my memory of this courtyard, it was a very hot, it is a very hot place. And um, there's this act of always looking upward because the rooms didn't necessarily have windows, it was really hot, I think mean, that's why. So, and I, as you can imagine, uh, I follow Zelina very closely. Her preoccupations with architecture, all the houses she lived with, resonated with me. So, um, that particular piece with the gold leaf was dedicated to her. Um, oh my God. You remember, like, when we are talking, there is the two Hindi lines by Dushyant Kumar, which I thought? Yes, yes. Um, there was there is this two lines in Hindi written by this uh, poet Dushyant Kumar, Dastak do divaru par darwaze khud ban jayenge. And then when I saw her painting, like you know, doing this in the college, like where where I teach, 
uh, I was like, this just came out of my mind. Like, you know, I, I feel so closely the hope, you know, especially being a woman in the Char Diwari and like knocking on the walls and opening up spaces for ourselves. So, and I have to say, so this is in the first semester, I have this installation and I'm putting it up at the Calgary Hall of the Arts. It was a jury uh, competition uh, for, it was a, an exhibition called Mutual, Mutual Fluidism. Yeah. Uh, so it was selected, so I was delighted and I was putting it up. It was a huge installation and Pallavi comes up and uh, she says these lines to me and I've been holding on to those lines every time I make the work because <laughs> Walls, yes, walls are walls, but walls can be broken. And I loved how walls can move the way to do this. Yeah. So, thank you so much. No, I, I, <laughs> so, I'm holding on to that. Um, yeah, I'd love, I'd love, so, I, this, my story is not unique. You know, it's millions of us who've seen this story, who travel this path. So, I really love you as a viewer to bring yourself into the work.